All right, this is my take on uh, making a fermentation chamber uh, for, for brewing beer. Um, I've been brewing beer a long time, but I've never had one of these, and I I decided I'd wanted to get one. So I, I went on YouTube, and I, I realized that a lot of people were having success with these mini fridges with a temperature controller. So I picked up a used one. You need a 4.4 cubic foot one because that gives you the, the height you need for a pail. Um, and in most of these have been... Uh, the, the designs that I saw on YouTube have a, a wooden collar you add here because the bucket won't fit all the way in there because there's a step in the back of it uh, that makes the bucket protrude a little so the door won't close. And I, I saw that and I was like, all right, I'll do that. But, but then I got it home and I actually realized I could do something different. So I thought I'd make this video to maybe help explain. And I think it worked out great. So what I did instead was it turns out my pail only sticks out a little bit. So I removed all of the liner to the door. I'll show that in a sec. And I added this half inch wooden shim that I just sawed out of strips of wood. Um, you know, I do have a saw, but you could probably come up with something pretty readily from the uh, Home Depot that could do this. And then reinstalled the magnetic uh, gasket. And the way this works is, Originally, the door's got this whole plastic tray in there like this, you know, front. Uh, it's all held down with little sheet metal screws around the edges. Remove all that. And then I, take the pla I took the plastic out of the uh, gasket and cut it away, leaving behind the frame of it. You need the frame of it to put the gasket back, but you don't want this thing. I just cut it with a, with a razor knife. And, and then I installed the wood with sheetrock screws into the door. And then I installed the frame back with the original screws that held it on, these little um, sheet metal screws. So it's back in, in just the way it was, and it closes great. The other thing you have to do is you have to modify the hinge plates. Top and bottom, they have some adjustment, but it's not enough to get this out a half inch. Now, I'm fortunate I have some machinery that allowed me to actually mill this, but it totally is doable with a hacksaw and a file if you got a way to clamp this down, like a vise or something. So just some basic hand tools. Totally can do it. You just stick this thing in a vise, saw it out with a hacksaw, maybe file it clean a little bit so that you can move this out further. You need to do the same on the bottom one. There's a similar one on the bottom. You got to do the same thing. You set the door back on here. You slide this to the correct position and tighten it back down, and you'll get the door to close again properly, magnetically sealed. Down in the bottom of this, I just had this little stick here because there's a bit of a taper to it. So let's see how it works. So I have a stainless steel brew bucket like that. There's a little lip here on the bucket that stuck out just a little too much. So I cut a little bit out of here. You can do the same with yours if you need to. And it works great. It fits, perfect. Will it work with other pails? I don't know. I do have a plastic brew bucket here. I've got bird seed in it. But I used to use these. A lot of people use these, right? The standard seven gallon brew pail. There's enough height for a airlock, just. And uh, yeah, closes great. So I think this is a neat alternative and I just wanted to post this to YouTube in case it could help somebody else who wants to build one of these. Cool.